how's it going everybody listen to me gnr tv is just amazing i've had it for a little over a year now and i freaking love it twenty dollars a month two devices over two thousand channels that's a lot no hidden fees none of that silly stuff twenty dollars that's it two devices over two thousand channels you got your movie channels you got your pay-per-view channels you got your sports channels you got your porn channels i know what you're thinking you know with the whole covid19 thing going on sports aren't really going on right now they'll be back that's one and two tomorrow's the nfl draft and tomorrow it's going to be done we're still going to be able to watch it on tv and if you have this app you'll be able to watch it live on tv but the cool thing about the draft and unique thing about the draft and possibly a once in a lifetime thing about the draft is nobody's going to be walking on stage or anything like that. Like everybody's going to be pretty much home and with their families as they're getting drafted the whole entire draft class. That's pretty amazing in a sense. It's interesting. I'll say at the very least, and you can watch it all with GNR TV on ESPN and all those other sports channels that it's on. Get this two devices, 20 bucks a month, no hidden fees, no extra charges, nothing. $20 is $20. And if there's for some strange reason you don't like it, you pay that 20 for the first month, you just don't pay again. Simple as that. There's no auto pay, so you don't have to worry about it coming out of your check the next month or out of your account. Get it, sign up, and I promise you, you will love this app. GNR TV streaming done right. Get it now. Enjoy the rest of this video and get GNR TV. So, we were just talking for a few minutes, but I'm going to introduce you. Dove's Movie Reviews. How's it going, man? We've been, and we've been going back and forth for a while trying to get this. Yes, you know, yeah. The time. Yeah, it's been a while, you know, yeah. The time difference is it's, nine hours. Now, where are you from? Um, I would rather not say that, if that's fine with you. Okay, that's is that, fine. Okay, yeah. It's, yeah, it's just it's some stuff that I want to just keep private, so... I mean, I um yeah I live in yeah I live I can say this um, I live in um in in Australia so um well yeah that's what I didn't mean like yeah. I just meant like that's what I mean like Australia that's cool yeah I live yeah I live in, in Australia so yeah and that's why we that's why we had this mix up people like a nine hour time difference is just yes yeah. I thought two hours because, like, I'll record with people from the West Coast. Two and three hours was crazy, but nine is just like a whole another freaking. I didn't yeah. know, like I didn't know what day it was, but t- I'm just. But yes. now we got it down. What? Yeah. So, is it? It's Thursday there then, right? Or is it Friday? Uh, Friday. Friday. Oh, you guys are. It's late. Thursday. Yeah, <laughs> it's Thursday where you are, isn't it? Well, no, not technically it's Friday because it's past midnight. Oh uh, yeah. But, okay, so you guys are nine hours ahead of us. Yes. That's, yeah. It's, how is it? Up? Insane. Um, how is it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, um, it's good. Um, it's, yeah, w- um, yeah, with all the uh, crazy stuff that's going out in the world with the coronavirus and all that. Um, mm-hmm. It's, yeah, it's been, it, it's been going, you know, going, up, going okay. Everyone, everyone's going good. Everyone's safe. So, yeah, that's it's, good. it's all good. That's How's good. everyone where you are? Um, like for as far as people, people that are personally know, friends and family, everybody's good. Everybody's safe. It's just, as we were discussing before, it's just so crazy. It's just because it's happening all over the place. It's not like it just happens yes. in one yeah. year. It's literally affecting yeah. everybody. Yeah, it, it spread it really quickly. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm amazed at yeah, how quickly it's uh, spread it. So, yeah, but it's, yeah. um, and I'm not going to say on this part too long, but I believe it's like pretty much cleared up in China. And what they did was just shut stuff down for a few weeks. And it yeah. Cleared. Yeah. Hopefully that solves everything is just like staying in your home and all that away, just isolating yourself from everybody else and letting this um, calm down and all that. And yeah, hopefully I, yeah, it will all get better soon. I agree, man. So what, um, how are the horrors? How's the horror scene out there? As far as like, do you guys get like a um, conventions and all that stuff out there? Or um, I haven't been to any conventions, but um, as far as I know, um, no, there aren't really any conventions um, here. The ones I know of are like, um, are like, 
uh, like a Comic Con and all that. And I think uh, a lot of those are yeah are in um, America because I feel like America has there's more people um, are living there than than here. And I feel like um, and plus a lot of the horror movies that we get nowadays they're made by um, they're made by American production companies. So um, yeah, I feel like that's why um, a lot more of the horror conventions are. Um, in America than here because we only have like a few horror movies that are actually made here. So there's like most, probably about like 95% of the horror that we get in cinemas are from um, American companies. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got another question for you. So who, who, who got you into horror? And like, what's the first horror movie you, you remember seeing that scared you as a kid? Yeah, ah, that's that's a tough question. Um, the first horror movie, the first real horror movie that I saw was one of Stranger Calls, the um the remake. Okay. Um, yeah, and the first movie that really scared me. Um, there's this uh, kids movie called. Uh, there's this kids movie called. Um, uh, there's this kids movie called. Uh, called. Uh, called. Uh, called uh, Called Napoleon. It's a um. It's about a, a dog and a cat. And the and the cat in that movie scared the living shit out of me as a kid. I would not sleep for like days after seeing that movie. So yeah, that that movie is like um is G rated. I watched that movie when I was really young, and mm. I, I haven't seen it for a while. But that was one movie that um I have a lot of um fond memories of as a kid watching it and just being uh, terrified. So, yeah, but I think um, if we're talking a horror genre, um, When a Stranger Calls, uh, the remake was, I think, the first one, and then I watched uh, Jaws after that, and When a Stranger Calls was, yeah, my introduction uh, to horror. So, yeah. Okay, okay. Jaws, that was... When a, I was just talking about that movie the other day, actually. When a Stranger Calls, that's the one where... um. Somebody's calling from inside the house, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. There's a whole um mystery of like of of there's a whole mystery of that like, could be outside, that could be inside the house, and you're just you're not sure mm-hmm. for the um for the movie. And then there's a yeah, there's a twist at the end of the movie. Um, there's a twist at the end of the movie revealing that the calls were coming from inside the house. So yeah, I yeah. haven't seen the original though. There was I know there was an original. I think it came out in 1975. I think or it came out in that um, era. Um, but yeah, I've only seen the remake, and I watched that um, actually a few at the end of last year. I watched it because I haven't seen that for a while, and the movie still holds up. Uh, like I don't get the criticism for the movie, um, but. Yeah, so I watched it. Um, I think I think it was like December last year, and um, yeah, it it yeah, it still holds up. It, it still holds up really well. It's still as scary as I remember it being. So that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yes. I, I haven't seen that one since it came out. I haven't seen it in theaters. It's something I do want to revisit because, like I said, I just we were talking. Um, me and a couple other people on another show were talking. Well, on this show, but another episode, so we're talking home invasion horror movies, and that was one that came up. And yeah. I myself haven't seen the original either, but it's, it's something I'd yes. really like to see because I'm sure it was. It had to be really good, and it had to be a little creepier then, because in the one for most was it like oh six, I believe. Yeah, uh, two thousand six. Yes. Did that one? Did the person that was calling them? Did they have a cell phone that they were calling from, or do you remember? I'm pretty sure it was a cell phone, I think. From memory, it was a cell phone, I think, yeah. Yeah, yep. And, like, that there, I mean, don't get me wrong, that would be creepy, that would be scary, but I just feel like the 70s one would be scarier because that's way before cell phones. That's... Yes. You know what I mean? Like, somebody literally has to be in your house using whatever they, whatever they're using to do. I haven't seen it, so, but it's just... Yeah. I gotta see it. <laughs> I do have to see it. <laughs> yes, yeah. They also made a sequel to the um, original one as well, which I I wasn't even actually aware that they made a sequel until a few weeks ago. I was just like, um, I was in uh, my uh, DVD shop and I just I saw uh, what a Stranger Calls uh, two on the shop and I was just like, whoa, there's a sequel to this. I didn't know yeah. it till just yeah. now. Till yeah, just now. 
Yes. And honestly, I didn't even know that. Um, I didn't know that this movie was a remake until recently, to be honest with you, to be 100% honest, because I didn't even think, like, when the movie came out, I never even thought of just, like, looking it up to see if it was a re, you know, and then. Yeah. It's not. It's a good movie, and I just def, like I said, it's something I definitely want to revisit, and I want to watch the original. But it's not one of those movies that you hear, or you bring up in conversation a lot. Yeah, no, it's not mentioned uh, um, a whole lot. Um, it's when it's brought up in like, um, like remake rankings. Um, that's always like on the. That's always like one of like the like last ones at the bottom. And I, yeah, like I said, I don't get the hate. I mean, yeah, people hate it. I mean, yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah, but I, I think I think it's because like. I I felt I think because why I like that movie more than some other people is uh, is because like that was my introduction to horror. That was my introduction to um to yeah, to the horror genre, and uh, I just have a lot of yeah fond memories. I think yeah, that's why that, whenever I watch yeah yeah you go. That makes sense. That makes sense because yeah. for me, my favorite I won't say my favorite horror movie because I can't really say I have one. But yeah. one that I always defend, my fa- I'll say my favorite sl- slasher series is Friday the 13th. But yes, yeah, I was that's, that, that's I was great. Kid. I was watching that since I was a kid, and I remember on Friday, you know, fr- on Friday the 13th, that weekend, there'd be a TV, it, there'd be a marathon on TV, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all that's shown is Friday the 13th. So, yeah, I would see yeah. that so much and just look forward to, fr- every time Friday the 13th comes out, you have that mark on the count, like, yes, I can sit down and watch Jason hack some people up, even <laughs> yeah. though on TV, yeah. Even though on TV, you know, they cut out a lot of good parts, but still, you knew what was going on. And then when you got to finally see it on, t- on VHS, it, yeah. it brought me to a whole nother level of love and horror. Yeah. yeah. yeah what did you think of the 2009 remake of Foot of the 13th? <laughs> it's funny you asked that one. Um, I like it. I really do like it a lot. My only, I, I mean, I even want to go see it in theaters twice. I think back to back weekends, me and my brother went. I have a couple gripes with it. One is it wasn't dark enough for me, as far as like to me, it just yeah, too, it, like a Friday the 13th movie. I know that there's going to be jokes in it, you know, that there's going to be like those silly characters, but for the most yeah. part, it's like a dark kind of serious movie in, in a sense. There's some comedy yeah. to it, but I felt like this one had too much comedy in it. That was boring. Yeah. And then I wish it was set in the 80s instead of like in 2008, 2009 with the cell phones. I wish it was set like in the 80s. How they, you know, how they do remakes now, how like they did um, yeah. for Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That was like set in yes. the time period. I yeah. think they did that with this movie and made it just darker. Still had the comedy in it, but kind of cut it down some. And I feel like that would have made it a lot better. The kills were obviously amazing as always. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Honestly, like the first, what was like the first five, ten minutes of the movie, the way the movie started and opened up was so freaking great. It, yes. it started up high here for me, and then it just, it wasn't terrible, but it just kind of, they dropped the ball with it some, but I did really enjoy it. I'm not going to say I hated it, but what were your thoughts? Yeah. On that? Um, it's, there was an interesting point that you brought up about the cell phones. Like, I think that makes sense because remakes have supposed to grab, um, like, like my generation of audiences, like teenagers and all that. And since we are so used to using our cell phone every day life and we rely on it for almost um, everything, I think that makes sense to aim for that, um, for that audience group, for that teenage um, group. I think that makes sense. But yeah, as far as in my thoughts as a whole on the 2009 remake, I, I really like it. It's up in easily my top, top three, top two best for the 13th movies, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I really, really loved the kills, actually. Um, I thought all the, the characters yeah, did their job mm-hmm. to, to go on screen and get killed off. Um, and and was it um, was it Derek Mears? Was he the one who played Jason? Yeah. Yep. He, I thought, was like an incredible Jason. I thought he knocked it out of the park as Jason. He was incredible. He's one of my favorite Jasons, actually, if not my favorite Jason. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I feel he played – I think he did an amazing job as Jason. I will I will definitely say that. My favorite is Kane Hodder. But – Yeah, oh, yeah, he's, he's iconic as Jason. Yeah. He's – and yeah. then, again, we're, me and you – what year – like, I was born in 85, so – 
I can see I can see why you like the newer horror. You're younger than me, so I can see why you like the newer yeah. horror stuff or the remakes. Like, I do, yeah, I do love remakes. Don't get me wrong, but I just yeah. feel like um, I'm trying to think of a movie. What's a horror movie that came out that? What's a newer horror movie that came out that you like a lot that's not a remake? Just so I can kind of make my point. Like in, in, in general? Yeah, just in general. Um, that you've seen. Um, uh, Fantasy Island. Okay, so say like that. I didn't see it, but say like they did a remake of that. Let's just say like 15, oh, 20 years it. down the road. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then whatever technology is out 15, 20 years down the road is what they put into that movie and kind of made it to that era. You would yeah. you, you would still like it probably, but you would have that nostalgia feeling for you for the one that came out. Yes. This, you know what I mean? This year. And that's how I feel about Friday the 13th. Because it's yeah, like, again, I, again, they did a really, really, they did an excellent job. Like some people didn't like that Jason was running. That didn't bother me because he runs and he yeah, runs no. in part two. Yeah. I think part three and part four. Yeah. Him having the underground tunnel stuff, I actually really enjoyed that. I was like, it makes sense because he's always popped yeah. up out of nowhere. And a cool yes. thing that one thing that I loved about it with underground tunnels, if you paid attention, uh, they had like the counselor's whistles on on the wall. They had the wheelchair that was in part two on the side. Like when he's down, yeah, I didn't, yeah, I didn't, I didn't you, say that. When you go back now, when you go back and watch it again, when he's downstairs in that little thing, you'll see it. It's like a quick glimpse of it, but you'll see like stuff from past. You know, the, like I said, the whistles or whatever from the counselors, you'll see the wheelchair, which was in part two. Yeah. And just little, little things like that really stand out for me. And I think the only other thing, okay, I said the seriousness. I wish it was darker. And then I wish it was, you know, set in the 80s. And then the only other thing maybe that bothered me, which wasn't too, too bad, is when Jason kidnapped the one girl because it looked like his mother. Yeah. Yes. yes. Other than yeah. that, though, yeah. he, just only because that's not his MO. He doesn't do that. He just kills whoever comes to his camp but it doesn't yes. look, look like his mom and all but again that wasn't a horrible thing yeah um it's there are definitely some bad remakes out there like for the 13th and texas Chainsaw, i think are some of the best remakes out there but um a remake i recently saw which i honestly hated um is the prom night remake I recently um, watched. Have you seen that? The Prom Night remake. <laughs> I didn't watch the remake yet. I just, nah. as a matter of fact, I just recently watched the original. But yeah, okay. how did they? How um, did they? How did they? Um, what did they do? Like, what? What didn't you like about the remake? It's, uh, it's the the characters are just so uninteresting, and they make the killer just. It's. He's just very boring it's just okay the movie's just not that not that not that interesting and it does a lot of horror movie uh, cliches that have been done like thousands of times before there's really nothing creative in it like um i can't even really i watched it um was i think it was uh last week i think um and i can't i can't really remember much about the movie as i'm talking to you now it's the movie is really forget I can't yeah I can't I can't even think of one scene that has stayed with me and the deaths um for a PG-13 movie the kills are all right I'll give it that the kills are all right there is certainly some blood in the movie Mm. um but yeah it's yeah it's I, I haven't seen the original so I can't really compare um, the two together, but yes, I I was aware that it was a, a remake. Like I am aware that like Film Night is based on the original movie, but yeah, it's yeah. It didn't. Yeah, it just didn't do it for you. Which it happened yeah. though. But um, yeah, there's yeah, there's like a lot of bad remakes out there. One that I really don't like is the Nightmare on Elm Street one. Oh, see, I'm with you. I'm with you. yeah. For me, I think my biggest, biggest issue with it, which is probably a lot of people's issue, is the look of Freddy. I think that's my yes. issue. But I will say, I think the reason why that is because Robert England is the only one who's ever played him before. So he has that signature. Even though they changed the makeup up a little, you know, between the movies. But he has a signature look. He has a sing- signature voice. And unlike Michael Myers and Jason, 
he doesn't, you know what I mean? Like, they wear masks. Like, Michael has the mask. Jason has the mask. Even though the masks changed up, even though the actors changed up, it didn't really take away from the movie, in my opinion. But with this, yeah, with Light- Nightmare on Elm Street, it was just... I think I only watched that movie, like, two times, to be honest with you. Maybe three. It's something I am going to eventually revisit to see if I change my mind on it. But yeah, that was a rough remake. Yes, and yeah. Speaking of remakes, did you see... um? The Evil Dead remake? Yes. Oh, I love that. I love yeah. that. That was great. That was great, I, that. that. That, to me, was one of the better... As a matter of fact, my <laughs> favorite remakes are Evil Dead and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. I, yes, it, oh, yeah, that's good. That's great. I, but, <coughs> excuse me. With me, I like the Evil Dead remake better than the original, but I like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre original better than the remake, but the remake was done so freaking well. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I I prefer the remake to Texas Chainsaw over the original because it's I, I just I thought it was I thought it was a lot more I thought it was like a lot more uh, it was a lot more brutal. It had a great lever face that he was the yeah, lever face. He was not effing around in that movie. Yeah. Like he he was out to get people, and yeah, the deaths were were absolutely incredible in the uh, Texas Chainsaw remake. Uh, I didn't see the um, uh, the um, Texas Chainsaw uh, the, the beginning. I didn't see that. I saw, yeah, the, uh, was, is it, did it come out in 2003, the remake after the beginning? Yeah, the, the remake came out in 2003. The beginning came out, I think, a couple of years after that. The new beginning, yeah. what it was called. That yeah. one wasn't bad. It's not as good as the re- it's not as good as the remake, not even half as good as the remake. Okay. But it's not it's not bad. It's yeah. it's definitely worth a watch. I did enjoy it. Okay. And, excuse me. The thing see that I get why you're, what you're saying about the brutal kills from the remake, which you're hundred percent right, you're a million percent right. Awesome, amazing yeah. kills. Thank you. But with um with the original, because it came out in the, what, seventy four, I wanna say. Seventy four, yeah, I think so. They couldn't do what they could do with movies now. Like, for them to have the kills they wanted in the scene, they'd have to make the movie X-rated. And yeah. they wanted to, you know, they didn't want to do that because then you get less people seeing the movie. So that's why a lot of the kills were off, off screen. There wasn't much, little to no blood in the movie. And I think every single kill, maybe except for one, was like off screen. Yeah. But I, now, I wasn't born when that movie came out. But I'm sure for its time, just because, like, I think... Hang on. I think that's one of the better movies that does off screen kills to where you still kind of feel it. You know what I mean? Like it's Yes. Yeah. I understand. With yeah. That, they did that really good with that movie. And probably better than any other horror movie that I can think of that's done a lot of like more off screen kills where you know somebody's getting killed, but it's like, you know, it's all off screen. They did a real good job with that. Yes. Um it's like I still love the original, don't get me oh, wrong, but like I haven't seen the original in quite a, a few months, um, so, and I I didn't see any of the sequels after the first one because I heard the sequels were kind of bad. So I didn't I stayed away from the sequels. But uh, yeah, why I like the uh, the um, remake more than the original? Like, like I said, it, it's a lot more. I think it's a lot more fast paced, more so than the than the original. Because it takes the original from memory um, a while to get going, but like the remake, it's like um, the opening scene was them on the road, and then um, uh, I can't remember her name, but yeah, she um, shot herself. Yeah, that She's, was oh man. Did yeah, you, like when I saw that, I was just like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. My my question for you is: Did you get did you get to see that one in theaters? The remake. I uh, know, actually, no. no. I bought it on DVD and, and watched it. Oh, man. That, so. that scene in theaters, like, you know how intense it is in theaters. That scene in yeah. theaters, man, was just like, you're just like, oh, shit. Like, you weren't, because yes. she pulls the gun from, you know, her crotch and then puts it in her mouth and boom. And then I love yes. how you see, like, you, the brain, Matt, just in the window. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was yeah. That was a great uh, that was a great opening scene, and it, it kind of it set the tone for the oh. rest of the movie really well at what the kills will be like, and yeah, it just it set the tone for the movie yeah, really well, and it's just it's a lot more darker than the original. Also, um, mm-hmm. as far as as far as characters go, I think the characters in the original are better than the remake. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, I had an absolute yeah, blast with the um, 2003 remake. Oh, me too, man. Me too. That's something I gotta, I gotta watch that, rewatch that soon, actually. It's yes, yeah, I, I have that yeah, on my shelf. Yeah, I, yeah, I have to rewatch it as well. I watched it. Um, I've seen it. I've seen it once, and I remember so much of that movie. And I, yeah, um, and I love it. I, I love face. Um, he, yeah, I thought it was. I thought he was a really mean and. Um, and rough Leatherface than mm-hmm. the original, and yeah, it's yeah, it's like I, it's yeah, like the original. I, it's probably just above the remake, maybe, but like the remake isn't far behind. But the the original Texas Chainsaw will always be a, be um, a classic. Oh yeah, so. yeah, yeah. That's what that's what I think. Like with with that one. Like I said, I like the original a little. I like the original better, but it's like, it's like this. Like it's really, really, really close because they did so well with the remake. Yes. And speaking of uh, things how we're talking about Texas Chainsaw Massacre, yeah. Leatherface. Did you see the Leatherface movie that came out? Maybe like three or four years. Yes. Ago? Yeah. You, yeah. How I did you feel about that one? And it's, I, I didn't really, I didn't really like. I didn't like the twist at the end because there was, there was, I can't remember the characters' names, but there was this. One character, which when he was when you first saw him on screen, you were like, "That is Leatherface." And then at the end, they pull this twist where he dies, and this other guy becomes Leatherface. And yeah, I just yeah, I didn't really, I didn't really I like. I mean, I might think differently when I go back and um, re- yeah, revisit it. But um, yeah, upon your first viewing, I was just like, yeah, this. I mean, th- there's some good scenes in. Mm-hmm. It, there's some good scenes in it for sure. Like I think the the last um, five minutes when he's um, um, stitching his face back together, um, oh, that I, yeah, that was that was great. Um, and I, I just wish the last five minutes could have been more of that movie. Like they could have. It's yeah, I, I felt like this movie um, dragged on for a bit uh, too long, and they could have cut to the leather face. I mean, I get it's supposed to be an origin story, but there's felt like there's a lot of needless things in it. I, I did personally, I did enjoy it, but at the same time, I do agree with you. Like that's one thing that bothers me sometimes with horror movies is. Yep. I mean, you want to get, you want a good story, but I feel like some of them yes. try too hard and they have way too much pointless dialogue. Like you don't need to see somebody. I'm just throwing this out there. You don't need to see somebody eating breakfast for 20 minutes talking about exactly. what they're doing the day. you can cut that into like two minutes and then you know add more to the story get deeper in the story and yeah kind of draw the fans in that one that leatherface movie actually wasn't very well received by a lot of freaking people like a lot of people either hate it or just yeah. kind of like it no i don't think anybody really loves it like i don't think i can't say i love the movie i do like it but it's yeah they they did they, they definitely dropped the ball with that one they definitely dropped the yeah. ball. yeah yeah, yeah. Well, like, yeah, like, uh, um, yeah. Well, I'm glad that that you enjoyed it. Yeah, it was fun though. Mm-hmm. It was fun. Yeah. Like, I don't know. They yeah. just did a little bit more. Yeah, it's not a movie. Um, I'm I'm in the rush to go back and rewatch. Yeah. Um, like I would go back and watch the uh, the original or uh, the remake or uh, Texas Chainsaw 3D. I would go back and rewatch that because that's one that critics like hate. That critics and audiences hated. It wasn't a uh, it wasn't that well uh, received, and I I, I love the um, Texas Chainsaw 3D. Really, I only yeah, to be honest, yeah. <laughs> I literally only seen that movie one time, and that was the weekend it came out in theaters. I have to revisit that, but from what I remember, I wasn't a big big uh, fan of it. Yeah. And I think one thing that really killed it for me was pretty much the end. His yes, cousin. yeah, I, I, I agree on that. Yeah, go get him, she, like that. Go get him, cousin. Threw him the salt. I, yes, that was. Yeah, that, that was mean, just like why. Uh, yeah, but. I think what they were trying to do with it, like the idea for it, was great. I just feel like they just didn't, they didn't execute, execute yes. it good enough, in my opinion. But yeah, again, it's one of those things. I, I agree. I have to, to revisit. But I, I would recommend. I know you said you've heard about that the sequels for Texas Chainsaw Massacre aren't that good. Yes, part two is good. It's a fun one. It's yeah, kind of like I've seen the, the 
comedy horror. Them. Yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. Like I've seen the opening scene to it when, um, like Leatherface is is in like a car chase and he's like on top of the car yeah. and it's on a bridge. I've seen the opening scene, but then then I think it cuts to this like police station. I was just like, this is nothing like the original. I think that one, I think part two is actually directed by um, uh, um, the same director of the original. I think. He- yeah, and yeah, you, oh. you go. I'm not 100% sure with that, but it's one of those ones where it's fun. It has more comedy in it. There is some cool kills in it. It has more comedy in it, though, and Bill Mosley's in it. You know Bill Mosley? Yeah, Bill Mosley, yeah. He plays uh, a character, Chop Top, which is like, he, like, steals the show in that movie, Chop Top. Yeah, nice. Once you, yeah, it's, I, I, I'd say if you get a chance, check it out at least once. Just give it a look. Yeah, okay. Now, yeah, the third, yeah, I will, yeah. The, the ones after that, you know, like I think there's like what part three or whatever else. I haven't seen those, which I'm eventually gonna watch those. But I did, I did see part one and part two, and then you know the remakes and all the newer ones. Yeah. But I feel my my favorite is the original, and then the remake, and then probably part two. But yeah, yeah, yeah. As a breakdown, it's yeah. I'd I'd go yeah the original because yeah it's iconic, it's a classic, and then the 2003 remake, and then. Texas Chainsaw 3D because one scene in the in 3D that I really I really like each time I watch it is the uh, is the carnival scene when Leatherface is chasing the main character through the uh, carnival I really mm-hmm. like that that was a yeah, that was a great scene but yeah the um but the ending I thought was just if it was very on it was very on the nose just the whole the whole here you go cars that I was just like. Yeah, and then I think the ending, like the very end of the movie, I think doesn't she go down in Leatherface's basement or something at the end? Like I don't they, remember. she, it wouldn't surprise me, but I don't remember what that. Yeah, like I, yeah, because I think yeah, she finds out that they're both that they're both uh, that they're both related, and I think yeah, she chooses I think to stay with Leatherface instead of leaving. I think that was the ending. So. Yeah, the, the probably like the last uh, probably twenty minutes yeah fell off the road right. for me, but everything else I was so so on board with. What do you um? Have you watched the Final Destination movies? Yes, yeah, what do, yeah. What do you think about those? Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, really, I really, I like the, I really like the concept and the story and the ideas behind those movies, and I think there's some really creative kills behind them and I um uh yeah it's the like the, the, the characters like you don't expect the characters to be good in a movie like Final Destination because you just want to see the, the deaths. Yeah. So yeah. Um the, the characters in the first movie I thought were uh, I thought were very good but then as there were more sequels um the characters just kind of were more left in the background and it was more about um mm-hmm. it was more about death itself so those, yeah. what are your thoughts i love those movies that's like when I'm, that's like my um guilty pleasure horror movies i guess you could say yeah just, they're it's one of you know what it is with those it's one of those movies where you can just put it on and just kind of just relax and chill you don't you're watching it, but you don't really have to like put your hundred percent focus into it. Yes, and you're mainly watching, yeah. like, like as you said, you're mainly watching it for the awesome freaking kills. And yeah. but a cool thing about those movies though, is that I like how they do connect. Like, there's always a way how the first one connects to like the you know they the whole franchise they connect in one way or another. There'll be something yes. to point it out, and there'll be like or there'll be like a flashback scene or just something, which I I thought was cool. But my main thing for watching those movies is the freaking awesome, awesome, awesome kills. Yeah, and I find I it funny how with like horror fans, I'm not sure if it's like that for you, but but you see the log, you know, you see the log trucks. Yes, oh, that's my favorite. Get in the other lane. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's so funny how how that because of that, like I can't think of it, but because of that one movie, a lot of people do that. Me included. I'm like, well, oh, shit. Oh, yeah, same here. Like, when, like, um, yeah, whenever I have like a long truck in front of me, I'm just like, uh, can we please move? Um, I don't want a long coming to exactly. uh, hit me in the face. So exactly. yeah, it's that's yeah, that's a scene that has always just stayed with me from the first time that I've watched. Whenever I'm on the road, or whenever I'm behind a log truck, the first thing that I think of is that death. 
it's uh, yeah, <laughs> it's great. It's a very really good deal. Yeah, it is. That's something else I'm gonna have to rewatch again soon because that's one of those ones where you can put on like a lot of times. What my wife and I will do is if there's movies I have like a franchise, we'll just watch from one till what. If it'll take sometimes it'll take us a couple of weeks to do it, you know, because of work and stuff. But we'll watch yeah. from part one to part whatever, and that's that's one of the franchises. We do it with all of them. Though. We did it with Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street. I think we have to do it again though. Friday the Thirteenth. Final Destination, Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies for the most part. Um, I did. We did Wrong Turn like a year, I think last year. Wrong Turn, yeah. fun movies. They, I think the last two I'm not a big fan of, but overall they're fun movies, and there are other movies that have some fun, fun kills in them. You watch yeah. them? Uh, um, what was that again? Sorry. Wrong Turn movies. Have you watched those ones? Um, yeah, I've, I've seen the first one. I haven't seen any of these sequels. I've been wanting, I've been wanting to check them out because they, uh, I've heard the second one's pretty good. I've heard the third one is decent, but then I've heard after that there's just a lot of straight to VOD um, sequels. But yeah, I, I definitely want to check out that franchise because I really liked the first long term. So. I, think, I think you would enjoy it because again, it's one of those movies where, at the very least, you have some good kills, some awesome. Films. Yes brutal bloody kills and if you're into that for the with horror the gory slasher type stuff you're gonna really enjoy them yeah i just like i said i I really did like the first four but five maybe even the first five i don't remember but i know the last one i did not like at all yeah okay fair enough um what what did you think of these uh soul franchise I enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun franchise. I see why people get are bored with it and tired of it. Like some people, some people, they're they're like you know I like the first one, the first two or three, but I enjoyed the whole thing all the way through Jigsaw. It's another yeah, thing. To, same. It's another one I'd have to revisit because I don't really remember the story that well. But yeah, it has a very confusing timeline. Like everything's like, all over the place. It really does. Like you, that's one of those movies you really do have to pay attention to. Yes. And like watch every single one because like say part four or five will be something will be the reason why something happened in part one and I'm just like what the hell? I don't remember that. Yes. But that's yes. that's a fun that's a really I, I enjoy it. And I'm actually I'm looking forward to the new one that's coming out. I don't know uh, if it's a, a spiral a spiral the book of soul. Yeah. I don't know if it's a remake, I don't know if it's a part of the story. Like I know Chris Rock is in it and he's helping produce it. Yeah. Samuel and Samuel Jackson, yeah. It's going to be interesting, um, at the very least. Yeah, it's that, that teaser trailer for Spell of the Book of Soul actually surprised me because I was expecting like a blood. Because, like, whenever you watch a Soul movie, whenever you watch a Soul trailer, you always expect to see like gore and the deaths and all that. And mm-hmm. I, when I saw that trailer, I was just like, whoa, there's not like, there's nothing like one drop of blood in that teaser trailer. But then I was just like amazed that they didn't really they didn't show that much, which I'm. I'm actually kind of glad they did because it was only a teaser trail, which that's what they're supposed to do is just kind of set up, get an introduction to what the story, the tone is. So yeah, I was actually kind of glad, but um, even for a Saw movie, that would be very challenging to have a trailer and not show any blood because that's, yeah, because that's kind of what um, Saw fans look for now. Well, that's what they go to a Saw movie expecting is they want the uh, characters to fail when they want to you see them yeah. die. So it, was, it, would, it would be really hard to, to edit a trailer and um, and not show any of the kills. So I was surprised. But, yeah, I really, I really like the trailer. I'm glad Samuel Jackson in, is in it. He will be an interesting uh, choice uh, yeah. for that movie. Yeah. And um, Darren, um, uh, I forget his name, but the direct, he's directed, like, some of the past – Saw movies as well. He's directing this one. He's been very heavily um, involved in the Saw franchise. So okay. um, now I'm glad that he's back here directing. I, actually, he directed he directed uh, Saw Two. Actually, I can't remember the director's name, but yeah, he directed Saw Two, Saw Three. I think from memory, but mm-hmm. yeah, he's and then I think he's produced. I might be wrong on that, but I think he has. Um, produced, but this isn't his first time he's directing a Saw movie, so he's already had experience making a um, a Saw movie. So, yeah, that, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I really am. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to um, as far as like this year with horror movies coming out. I think my number one is Candyman. 
Yes, you are. Yeah, that, that, oh, that, that trail was incredible. Oh, that is a really scary trail. Oh, that that was good. And then, like, have you? Did you see the original Candyman? Uh, no, I, like a, a lot of people have told me to watch it, and like I will watch it now that um, the new one is coming out. That gives me a reason to actually um, watch Candyman. I've heard the the sequels are really bad. So, yeah, especially yeah. The third one. I will say this though: I feel. If you can, I mean, try to watch the original before you watch the remake. Because I know this. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, know, of course, yeah. I know this was supposed to come yeah, after one, and then two with Candyman. There's a, there's going to be cool kills in it, but for yeah. this is one of those movies you really want to pay attention to because this is this is one of those horror movies which I love. You're really watching it more for the story than the kills. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So the, yeah, it does. Like, yes. It it freaking draws you like it'll draw you in. And it's, I just thought it was amazing. My, my, my brother and I, we just did a podcast on that last, sometime last week. I think like last Thursday or something. And it was just, it's so freaking awesome. It's one of those movies that it still holds up to this day. Like it came out in 92 and it still holds up to what 2020. And then, yeah. like I said, the, the what is it? Like a spiritual sequel, I believe they called it. I think it's going to be really good. That's like my number one movie right now. Number two. I, if, if it's coming out this year, it's The Conjuring 3, because I love that franchise. Yes. Oh, yeah. The, the Conjuring, yeah, is one of my uh, all-time favorite franchises. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I really, I, I'm one of the people who actually liked Annabelle. Like, I know a lot of people hate on that. I really liked both Annabelle uh, sequels, both Annabelle and Annabelle uh, creation, and yeah, the Conjuring films are great, and the, um, and the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the, the, yeah, the, uh, the, the nun movie that came out was, um, yeah, that was actually really good. I, I actually saw that, um, a few, um, weeks ago, um, because it's, it's on Netflix at the moment, and I watched that, and it's, my, my thoughts have definitely changed on the movies because, like, a lot of, a lot, like, the main reason why people are hating on the, on the nun is because, um, is because you don't get to see the actual nun, the demonic nun, throughout the entire movie until, like, the last 10, 20 minutes of the movie. And that's a lot of people go, went to the nun expecting to see the, the to see the demonic nun for the majority of the runtime. And, it's, I've always had the mindset that it, it's an origin story. You're not going to it expecting to see the demonic nun. You're expecting a build-up um, from to see this character to become the nun because that's what it's supposed to be. It's, it's supposed to be an origin story. It's not supposed to be, like the opening scene was. Um, it's that's definitely made me think differently because um, the opening scene, yeah, the uh, demonic nun was. Um, uh, Oh, was they opened the the open they opened the door and the uh, nun the demonic nun was yeah was set free and like I mean yeah like oh like yeah I mean like yeah like uh I'm, I like yeah like yeah I, I get that but mm. um yeah it's I went more into it for the origin story so I wasn't really expecting to see the to see the to see the nun because the the trailer didn't really show the nun, so I wasn't really going to it expecting to see it. Like, I was expecting to see it in the, in the last five minutes, I'm guessing that's when the transformation would be. But, yeah, it's like, like and I also get that the nun is like, it's like this, yeah, it's like this uh, this demon from hell to, um, character. And then you're like, yeah, I, I get that. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I guess, yeah, to sum up what I'm saying, yeah, I, just, I don't really get the hate for the nun. I mean, I have my, um, the stuff I don't like in the movie for sure, but yeah, I, I don't hate it as much as other people do. How about you? No, I, I enjoy Like I, I really like the whole Conjuring franchise that I've ever yeah, same. seen. And the nun, I mean, out of all of them, that might be lower on the thing, but Fair enough. <coughs> excuse me. At the same time, I loved, I loved the whole, the franchise as a whole, I love the Conjuring franchise, and I love how they're making all these movies connect in one way or another. They tie together yes. one way or another, which I think is amazing because yeah. you like you see that with like Marvel movies now more than anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And everything you don't really see that in the horror universe, which I think I would love to see that more. And I think that it's awesome that they're doing that. Yeah. And but yeah, like um, I'd have to say the Conjuring though. 
I think the original Conjuring is probably my favorite out of that franchise. As of yeah, like, same here. yeah, same here. Um, I'd probably go Conjuring, yeah. Conjuring Two, and then Agreed. the last Annabelle that came out. I like that a lot. Was it Annabelle? Uh, creation? Was the creation? No, um, no uh, Annabelle comes home. That one, I love that one. That's my favorite. I, it probably goes those two, and then that Annabelle movie, and then the rest. Kind of, I'd have to rewatch the rest. But yeah. that Annabelle movie was just like wow. <laughs> it was yeah. awesome. it was so freaking good. Yeah. Um I uh yeah, I in my favorite uh out of the like I like all the conjuring movies, but if I had to choose one as my favorite, I'd probably choose the original conjuring. Cause mm-hmm. that's more like I always have this debate with my friends about which one's scarier, the conjuring two or the conjuring one. And I always say the conjuring one because the conjuring two feels like it's too over reliant on CGI, but the first one is just like a simple, like ghost movie, and it, it actually it feels real. It's like I think there's very, um, there's a very small amount of CG in it. It's not that noticeable, but yeah, the first one it just feels more real. But the yeah. second one, like the whole like um the uh, the crooked man scene and the um and the nun scene, I I just thought there was. You can tell that there was some CGI in there. It, was just, it didn't look as good as it could be. Like I'm not saying that CGI looked bad. I'm just saying compared to the first one, it's, oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it doesn't hold up as well. Now, you know what I loved about the first one too was the clapping game? Yes. Oh, I yes. Yeah. I, was, I, went was to that, I was laughing so freaking hard when that was going on. And my wife, she's jump in and all this stuff but I, and that which is even harder but that they just I, I just love that franchise another one is um the insidious movies those three movies are good yes yeah the, the insidious is great I, um which do you yeah. like better out of the insidious and conjuring movies uh easy, yeah. easily probably the uh the conjuring probably yeah same here even if even if we just did Conjuring one and two, and Insidious one, two, and three. You know, not yeah. not including Annabelle. I still like Conjuring better. Yeah, yeah. That's why I'm excited for the uh, for the Conjuring three this year. Is because like with the first one, it start it started high. The second one, it it was still high. The third one, I'm hoping does not uh, does not let down. I'm hoping. So, I'm hoping it's as good, at least as good as part two. Yes, or better than part one. Yeah, I, that's, that's it's tough to ask for, but I'm just yeah. saying, like I want it to, or at least stay as good as part two. Like I said, like I don't want I don't want it to be like you know part one's way up here. Let's say part two is here, and then part three is like right here, and then say yes. another one just to the point where it's like all right, I I don't want to watch these anymore. I'll wait till it comes out on DVD or Blu-ray. Yeah. Oh, what the, was that? There was another movie series I was gonna ask about. I can't even think of it now. It just slipped my mind. It slipped my mind. Um, are you excited for Halloween Kills this year? Yeah, that I think that I think that's gonna be pretty good. As a matter of fact, yeah, I enjoyed the one from 2018. Yes, I mean, I love that. I, some people have some, I mean, every, you're always gonna have your complaints about horror movies, but yeah, like it, the, the thing about movies and like any genre is even like even the classics like um star wars and lord of the rings and all that the you can always nitpick little things out like no oh. movie is perfect so that's you don't like and like um some movies do get dated um yeah. as it does go along but yeah so there's always going in yeah, movies there's like even like the perfect ones, like Lord of the Rings, that people uh, love, even those movies have like um, small problems in it. So like, yeah, no movie is um, perfect. Oh, yeah. so. You're never gonna get your perfect, but that's kind of a good thing, though. I think. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. Weird as that sounds, it's kind of a good thing. Yeah, I I agree with you on that. So what's what um what's your favorite subgenre of horror like mine is slash hands down mine is yeah. slasher. slasher same here slasher yeah i love i love slasher it's um um a lot of the um a, a lot of the um short horror films i've made have been yeah, based all in uh slasher and yeah like i, I love a nightmare on elm street that's yeah, one of my favorite movies of all time Friday the 13th uh, mm-hmm. pieces um the uh the i know what you did last summer franchise i think is great um and yeah it's i'm a huge yeah, slasher fan and i i recently watched um 
Uh, the I recently watched uh, the um, I recently watched uh, the Burning. Have you seen that? Uh, no, I haven't. I don't think so. Yeah, it's, yeah, I, I definitely recommend watching the Burning. It is it is great, and like and Sleepaway Camp, I think is another one of is another one of my favorites as well. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm a yeah I'm a huge yeah, slasher fan. I love slasher movies. Now you said you did a few horror horror short movies, short films. Yes, that's yeah, that's right. Yeah. Are they available to watch, like for anybody to watch? Or yes, um, so yeah, I've um, I made uh, the I made the um, a short film called um, a short film called uh, the um, a short film called the Stalker, which is available um, on, on YouTube to watch. There's two cuts of that movie. There's an extended cut, which is uh, four minutes in length, and then there's a two minute um, cut and and um and it's a uh, slasher film and we're making a sequel to this uh, stalker at the moment. It's titled The Stalker Part Two: The Final Chapter. Um, and we've shot a quarter of it. And at, at the moment, since we've kind of we've postponed shooting the film for a while due to yeah, what's happening, um, we've been just kind of been working on like the special effects and the sequel is yeah, is bigger, better than the original. Uh, there's a, there's a lot more violence, there's a lot more blood, and it definitely it goes bigger and better like a sequel should be. And I hope yeah, people who really do like it. So yeah, along with yeah, along with that. Um, I've been involved in a couple of other um, horror projects uh, as well. At the moment, um, along with the Stalker Part Two, I'm working uh, with a few other horror directors um, on, um, on a couple of other horror, horror, uh, horror um, projects. Um, one of them is um, is uh, one of them is Camp Blood. It's a Friday the Thirteenth uh, fan film, and it's based. Uh, 30 years after uh, Friday the 13th, the final chapter. And um, yeah, a script for that movie is already done. It's already written. And the um, shooting for um, Camp Blood has been yeah, postponed. Yeah, like I said, to what's happening. Yeah, like all my all my projects at the moment have been postponed because yeah, we just, yeah, like I don't want to, um, it's yeah, like I don't like, I don't want my friends to get it all. I don't want the cast and the crew to get um, your what's to get the uh, coronavirus. I'm just trying to keep you know, my cast and crew um, for these for my projects um, safe. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and along with that, um, I'm also working on I'm on Halloween uh, a fan film called called the Hayden Field Nightmare. It's the next. Um, it's the next chapter in the H2O story, so it's a continuation of the H2O story. Um, I'm a, my role in in that project is I'm a promoter for that film, so as I, I market it for um, I market it for the uh, director and mm-hmm. uh, for Camp Blood, uh, the Friday the Thirteenth film that we're that we're working on. Um, it's uh, it's directed by uh, it's directed by um, directed by by Mark, by Mike by Mike uh, Le, by, by Michael uh, Lemkin I think Lem, Lem, Lemkin um, and yeah, he's our he's our director and he's yeah, he's done a he's done a terrific job with the script it's it's the um, it goes back to the roots of what made Friday the Thirteenth Friday the Thirteenth and it's a really great uh, great script and. Um, and uh, and yeah, that's yeah, there. And actually, yeah, what we're talking about yeah, films I've been involved in in the past. Um, I, I worked on a um, on a it was like a horror comedy film. It was a uh, it was a parody of um, Friday the Thirteenth Part Two called Camp Death Three in Two D. And yeah, you can get that. That's on. Uh, that's on. Uh, that's, on uh, that's on. You can buy that on 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 Amazon. Okay. Um, and it's on other platforms as well and that was directed written produced by matt frame who he did a, a terrific job the movie is really funny and it, and yeah there so yeah i'm yeah making a few uh, projects yeah at the moment and uh the yeah is that okay if i just talk about the stalker part two for, oh, for a minute of course yeah yeah um so yeah the uh the cast 
<clears throat> so you know, I directed the uh, the original um, the original the Stalker, which it's a it's heavily uh, inspired by Scream. Like if if, if you've seen it, um, you will pick up that it's heavily inspired by uh, Scream and. Um, and with the sequel, I wanted the sequel to be different. And I feel like with most horror sequels, they like they, and with the horror movies in general, I feel like they try to play it safe. They don't really try to really stretch the limits, which we, we try to do that in part two. And it's, um, it's a really uh, scary film. It's not so much. There's, I think like one or two jokes in the film, but for the most part, this is a, it's a really, it's a really intense um, ride, which I hope your people in, uh, which I hope people enjoy. And I'm really yeah, proud of my cast, um, Finn, who's playing the main character, um, who's playing the main character, uh, Josh. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, um, uh, and my friend, um, and my friend Isaac, who, he he's he's playing the uh, the stalker. He played in the stalker in the first um, stalker film, and he's reprising his role to play a stalker. And he is the best he has ever been. So yeah, I'm really proud of of, of everyone's in, involvement, and yeah, I hope uh, your people you really do really do like it. That's awesome, man. That sounds interesting too. Um, when we're done with this interview, you should send me send me the YouTube link. Okay, I, yeah, 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 I will. I definitely yeah. check that out. That sounds, that sounds cool. And me, like I'm a huge, huge indie horror fan. As far as like, yes. I try to support it any way I can, even if it's just a simple share. Yes, back I mean, Indiegogo, that's, back yeah. in indie goggles and all that stuff. I mean, it, it's I can't always back the indie goggles. None of us can because you don't always have money like that. But yeah, of course, yeah. Just a simple, just uh, a simple share helps. But yeah, I, yeah, I, thought, I definitely want to check that out, man. So definitely make sure you send me those links, please. Yeah, and um, oh, you brought up a point that I, I just uh, I just uh, forgot. Um, it's you know, all the like that's kind of like the main reason for why I'm like working on like Camp Blood as a producer and yeah. uh, Haydenfield Nightmare at the moment as a promoter because I want um, I want to these people are like are like first time directors at least Mike who yeah. is in charge of Camp. Uh, Camp Blood. He's this is his first time directing, and like I've been in, in his shoes before. I've been in that mindset where this is your first film. I like to yeah, help um, mm-hmm. just um, first time filmmakers because I know how difficult it, it can be, especially starting off. And yeah, they need as much yeah, support. So it's kind of um, as, as a producer, I um, I just kind of I, um, I I don't necessarily help out. Like I, I did help out with the budget but my main role as a as a producer is i'm more i'm um, going and helping these directors with their scripts with yeah. their scripts um and i'm more just trying to really make these characters um make these characters really stand out make them really really likable and try to make sense of everything that goes on so i really just try to be there at every uh, stage of these films for these directors, so uh, if they need uh, if they need anything, I can always uh, help them. And yeah, that's like that's the fun thing about um, being a producer is you is you just is um, is seeing is seeing like the director's vision, yeah. um, seeing the director's vision, just seeing how he uh, creates it. So yeah, that's. Because when making the stalker, it was it was a really uh, difficult uh, project project to make since that was my first um, film that I, my first uh, short film that or well, fan film that I ever made. Mm-hmm. Um, it's yeah, like I had a lot of yeah, trouble um, with like with like um, with like uh, getting people involved in like in like filming and all that, and it was just. It was really, um, uh, it was a really a difficult uh, process, but the final um, product for the stalk was yeah, was uh, was uh, was really good. So that's yeah, like I don't want these to that to happen to the filmmakers that I'm helping out. I want them to, um, I, I really want them to have someone that that they 
that they look up to that they can really that they can that if they're stuck with something that they can always go to uh, for help so that's yeah as a producer that's what really I do and plus like I've been under their um I've been under their yeah their shoes before I've been in the mindset of of making um your first fan film in like there's a lot of um, problems that can go on there, especially making your first film. So yeah, it's yeah, I, I'm really proud of the of the film of the short films that I'm a part of um, at the moment. So yeah, that's that's good though, man. Like just helping them out any way you can, supporting them any way you can. It does. It and I'm sure it means a lot to those guys. And it, like I said, that's what that's what I do on here too, as far as my show goes. Like I just before you couple hours ago i was recording with some um indie horror individuals for, yeah. they have their indiegogo going on right now and they were saying how they actually made a post pretty much saying like i understand you know with the coronavirus going on because i think the indiegogo is about to end soon i'm not 100 percent sure how they run but they're going to redo it with all the same perks because you know this pandemic we're going through people don't always yes. you know the extra money to spend on that when it's like, I'm, you know, some people are out of work and not getting paid or whatever the case may be. So exactly. Yeah. But it, it's, it's one thing I love about the horror community is it's so like rewarding. It's so rewarding because everybody's so humble and everybody's willing to help each other out one way or another. Like I said, again. yeah, exactly. And yeah, like, and, and we all, when we all get, get along, even though we have different opinions, we all accept that. And we all, um, yeah. Yeah, we all get along. And it's, yeah, it's, Hoa, I think is, is I think is the best yeah, Hoa, um is the best yeah, Hoa community because like uh, uh, like other genres um well yeah other um yeah other genre uh, communities they um like there's like at least from what I've heard I can't confirm this but like there's like a lot of like back and forth and all that but with like um yeah the Hoa yeah we're, we're all kind of yeah we're all in it uh, together and. I agree. Yeah, we all, yeah, we all respect each other's opinion, and that's you come kind of, um while I started making um horror film films in the first place is because um uh, is because you might agree with me on this is I love that feeling of being scared. I love that feeling of just being in in being in that situation, and it's that's I think what a horror movie has supposed to do. It's supposed to you know get get your heart pounding. It's supposed to Get you, get you scared and all that, and that's what you know, I try. Um, I, I try to do is I try to make my films as scary as, and as intense as possible. Like there are, like obviously with Hollywood, you have to have those moments where the audience can breathe, where they can uh, get a breath before it starts going again. And like yeah, I obviously have those moments in um in my films, but I, I try to I, I try to stick with with what I like in horror. And the thing, the good thing about the stalker part two, the final chapter is um, when I was writing the script um, for uh, the stalker part two, the final chapter is I was looking at the, at the first stalker and I was, I was reading all the criticism that that first film had. And I took all of that criticism and put it into this uh, sequel and made some use out of that, like made, and really turned that criticism uh, upside down and made it uh, way more better. Because I, looking back at this uh, stalker, like I see the problems that I did with that first one, and I want to, I, and I want to try and make it from that people, um, that they can actually get scared of, that they can actually, you know, grip onto something they just they feel like that they can't l- let go. So, um, yeah, that's what I try to do with um, part two and. Yeah, like I said, it's a really scary sequel. So I try to make the best sequel I can because the best sequels are like to me is like um uh is Saw Two, um Saw Two, uh Saw Two Aliens. I still know what you did last summer. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, um, a Hostel Part Two, like watching and Paranormal Activity Two, um, as well. Like those sequels, they really went bigger and better like yeah. so uh, was like a was like a um psychological um horror film in part two it went so much bigger and better in the like in the gore factor and the um story factor and that's what i 
what I look for is is I think a sequel. I think it's a sequel. Um, I think it should expand on on the story that you told in the first one, mm-hmm. which like there's like the sequels um, that you get that aren't that just don't um, that just don't follow the first film in any way. Like, um, have you did, did you see Brahms the Boy Two this year? I didn't see that one yet. Yeah, I, I do want to see it, but I just feel it's kind of. I don't know how it's gonna work to be honest with you, just because yeah, of it's ended. Yeah, it's um it's an unwanted sequel. That's a sequel that um I watch, I was just like Well, like I won't give anything away, but mm. I was just like, Whoa, this is this is terrible. This is it's like it wouldn't surprise me if Brown Support Two actually ends up being my number one worst movie of this year. It was honestly really oh. bad because it doesn't it just like it has the title, like it has the title from the first film in its title. So like in the posters and all that, and you you, you go into it expecting to see like a sequel, and it's just it's like totally there's like totally different characters. There's there's a different story, and oh, man. yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's really and. It's, I won't spoil it to you, but I won't spoil it. But the ending, I honestly went wow at the end. I was just, so, I was in shock at the ending because it was, I was just like, wow, they actually had the balls to do that and to say, and to say F you to the audience. I was, Aww. yeah, uh, the ending's really bad. Um, another sequel that, um, that doesn't even follow the first one. I mean, it very loosely does, but it's, um, Blair Witch 2, Book of Shadows. Mm-hmm. Uh, have, have you seen that? Honestly, I didn't uh, even, I have still have yet to watch the original Blair Witch, the first one. Oh, what? Uh, okay. One yeah, day. Okay. I know. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a really, really good movie. The original is really great. And I know with that movie, it's going to be, I mean, I'm going to feel different about it because I should have watched that movie like 15 years ago, but I'm, I'm yeah, going like, to. It still holds up as well okay. as it did back then, still like as, as effective. Okay, because um, I know that's like one of the first found. That's like when found footage yeah. really started was with that movie, and then it yeah, took off from there. Yeah, and it's yeah, it it um, it's yeah, it still yeah, holds up. So yeah, I definitely yeah, recommend you yeah, seeing um, yeah, Blue Witch Project and the the remake to Blue which I also thought was pretty decent as well. Um, but yeah, so this book of shadows like it's just. I mean, it, in a way, it does connect to the first, but it's just, it, it's horribly executed in what yep. it tries to do. So That makes sense. Yeah. There's like, there's those sequels out there that just, that have that name only to, uh, only to get money from the audience. Yep. That's the, yeah. There's like, the, yeah, there's those sequels in. So, and like, like to me, when I watch a sequel and, and like it has the it has the name of the first movie in it. Like I'm going into like sequels wanting to see this, wanting to see this because you know like the first one is always like so good. So you're obviously hyped. That was me with um, Drums of Boy Two. Is I loved the first boy and going to sequel I was really excited because the first one it ended um, on such a high note. Like that they can go they can easily make a great sequel out of that ending. And it's just, yeah. And that's the, the problem with your, with Bronze Boy 2 is it's, is that ending. It's, it's not even, it's not even like a thing anymore. It's just like, that was the ending to the first movie. And so it's like the sequel, it's just like, it's something totally different. So yeah, that's, that's probably one of those movies where um, they didn't need to make a sequel to it at all. Like you said, it ended on a high note, and they could have did yeah. something great with it, or they could have just left yeah. it alone, but it ended on a high note because exactly, yeah, it's the first one was so good. Yeah. The first one was really. Oh uh, yeah, the the um the whole mystery in that movie of like of is this of is this all possessed? Is it is someone hiding in the walls? And um, it's like that whole mystery of the doll. Um, moving room to room, and you just don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. I, I love that. I thought that was just that was that was really great. 
So, and the the other sad thing about like Drums the Boy Two is that it's directed by the same director, which I'm just like, how can he go downhill from here? I mean, yeah, the first one was just so good, and it's yeah, like that was one thing as I was watching, I was as I was just like, this is like the same team behind, well, with the same director and writer behind the first boy, and I'm just like, how can he go downhill? You're but it, yeah. Yeah, I, I would guess I, just, I wasn't a fan of that. Um, one of those money, one of those oh, money grabs cool. there. Yeah, exactly, oh, yeah. Grabs. But um, I guess we can get this one wrapped up, though, man. But we definitely got to do this again. Yeah, Not sure. Yeah. Our, our time difference and everything. But if there's anything <laughs> yeah. you want, if there's anything you want to plug, feel free to plug it. Your YouTube channel. I don't know what, if you plug your social media or not, but anything you want to plug, go ahead and plug it. Yeah, okay, so I guess I just want to say that, yes, thank you for letting me be on this podcast. It's been a lot of fun. Um, and and you can uh, see the Stalker Parts of the final chapter when it comes out. At the moment, we don't have a release. They were kind of, after talk with my producer about it, because since the film has been postponed, we're not sure how long this will go on for. So we're going to have to talk through that. But when it does eventually come out, you guys will be able to see it. And yeah. same with, yeah, same with uh, Cam Blood and the, and the Haddonville uh, Nightmare. Um, you definitely check out them when they uh, come out as well. And you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at, uh, at Dubs Movie Reviews. And you can also check out my YouTube channel where The Stalker, um, both cuts of that film are available to watch mm-hmm. um, at, yeah, at uh, Dove's Movie Reviews on, on YouTube. So, okay, cool, cool. Dove's yeah. Movie Reviews all over, the, which is smart. Get, yeah. listen, people, that's, if you're into this type of stuff, as far as doing a podcast, a YouTube channel, Instagram, whatever the case may be, whatever your hobbies are with that, using social media, keep your names as close to the same as possible. Yeah. It's so easy to find you and search you. Yeah. Definitely a smart thing. And mm. thank you for coming on, man. Like I said, I yeah, so good. we were trying this for a few months. We're definitely going to do this again. We understand, yeah. that, we understand that we're nine hours apart yeah. as far as yes. yeah. time, you know, the, the time difference, I'll say the nine hours apart, but we're yes. definitely going to do this again. And for I sure. had a great time. I'm definitely going to check out You're your work. Yeah, thank you. Definitely going to check out your work. And yeah, man. Have a good have a good rest of the evening or day. I don't even know. <laughs> afternoon. 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 Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna go after this. I'm gonna save this and go lay down and just relax and try to get some sleep. But again, yes. thank yes. you so much for coming on and we'll def we will definitely do this again. I had a great time. Yes, yes, it sounds good. Yeah, thank you.